What's up guys, Lifting here. We are just about one week into the new league and I hope you have had a great time thus far. I know I have. In this video, I'm going to present five Path of Exile builds for you to get inspired by. You can find a link to each guide in the description below. As promised, I will be releasing a video like this once every week with new builds for you guys to draw inspiration from. If this is something you think you might want to see more of, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for future releases. Also, my dear patrons, you guys have been absolutely insane the last two weeks. Thank you very much for your generous support, you beautiful man's people. If any of you guys out there want to support the continuation of future videos, you can do so by visiting patreon.com slash lifting nerd bro. It's a big part of how I'm able to do this and I am incredibly grateful to each one of you. Thank you. Let's get into this week's five belts that I want to present to you. And if you're lucky, who knows, there might actually also be a bonus belt. The first entry on this week's list is a Summon Raging Spirits build by Brittle Knee. As the new patch came around, a lot of people found themselves debating whether or not Summon Raging Spirits would benefit from the new melee changes, considering the fact that they deal melee damage after all. For a while it wasn't entirely clear if that was going to be the case, however just recently Rory confirmed that SRS will indeed be affected by some of the general changes to melee, area of effect, swing patterns and that melee splash will work with their attacks. And that's a good thing. Summon Ranging Spirits have in the past been an incredibly powerful and reliable spell that was used by racers but also people that just wanted a solid mapper or boss killer build. However during the last few leaks it kinda fell off the radar. Not because it was bad, but more likely because it just remained the same for a very long time and there were newer and sexier builds to try out instead. For that reason, Brittle Knee's build receives the spotlight as the first build on this week's list as there is now good reason to revisit this excellent skill. We're bringing Sexy back. And what could be more appropriate to do so than by having it played as Ray class number one two most sexy bitch, the Necromancer. Via this ascendancy you can unlock several powerful bonuses to minion damage, speed and duration, not to mention having your offering skills such as flesh offering not only influence your minions, but also having it apply its effects to your own character. Summon Raging Spirits is a minion skill, thus technically making you a summoner. However, essentially it really feels much more like playing a caster build. Every time you cast a spell you summon this flaming skull that will then set out to attack your nearest enemy. The skull has a certain duration limit before it expires and you can have up to 20 Raging Spirits up at a time. To make the best of that, SRS builds will want to balance cast speed and duration modifiers to reach a point where they can effectively summon 20 Raging Spirits quickly without them expiring too fast. When it comes to it, playing a summon Raging Spirits build essentially feels like bombarding your enemies with tons of heat seeking missiles. And from my own experience with the skill I can tell you that I at least find it to be a very fun and engaging skill to play with and build around. Brittle Knee's build is rather budget friendly and if you haven't already started the league yet it can certainly also fit the role of being a great league starter. Of noteworthy gear Brittle Knee's setup features items such as the Covenant chest armor, the Victorious charity shield and the Grip of the Council gloves. This build can deal with any content in the game and works great as both a fast mapper and a boss killer at the same time. Finally, I have to compliment the author on the well presented and not to mention sexy forum guide. Check it out. The second build on this week's list is an Earthquake Duelist build by Prycro. When Earthquake was originally released as a skill back in 2.2, it was incredibly powerful. It dealt a massive amount of damage and was incredibly girthy. Over time it received one nerf after the other until it just fell behind the other melee meta contenders. Fortunately 3.7 came around and fixed that with a big buff to the Earthquake skill itself plus several new and powerful support gems that complement the skill. Fast forward and Earthquake is once again in a great spot. The skill Earthquake basically consists of two mechanics, the initial hit and the following Afterquake that it creates which provide the bulk of both damage and girth. To efficiently use this skill, players will want to balance the duration of the Afterquake to the attack speed of the initial hit as only one Quake effect can be queued up at a time. 
It's for that reason earthquake gem links often include the less duration support gem. This is an attempt to reduce the amount of time it requires for the afterquake to proc after the initial hit. Prycrow's build is played as the Slayer Ascendancy. Via this you'll receive big buffs to damage, attack speed, girth, but also a very powerful life leech mechanic that isn't stopped at max health. You'll also get a 20% call effect, meaning that any enemy that reaches or dips below 20% health will instantly die from your next attack. Of noteworthy gear, the build features items such as the Aetherius Disfavor Axe, the Belly of the Beast Body Armor, the Tomb Fist Gloves, the Carnage Heart Amulet, and four different unique flasks including Aetherius Promise, Taste of Hate, Lion's Roar, and Sin's Rebirth. And a word of caution here, melee is very much the meta at the moment, and many of these items are thus currently in very high demand. This may result in them being more expensive than what you're used to. However, you are of course not expected to be able to afford all of these items to begin with. They are merely suggestions on something to invest in for endgame, and you can farm as you go. With Prankrow's setup, you'll find yourself with a very girthy and tanky build that deals more than enough damage that is able to fill any hole for anything you might face in the game. The third build on this week's list is a holy shit, uh, holy flame totem templar by Wallach. Holy Flame Totem is one of those relatively new skills to Path of Exile, and for anyone wondering why it looks a bit like Flame Totem, well, then that is because one day a priestess of Orioth felt a bit lonely, and rather than sinning, she decidedly chose to pleasure herself with the Flame Totem that she was using as a night lamp. Little did she know that the Archbishop earlier that morning did the same thing. And as we all know, men aren't that big on tidiness, and he left a bit of his holiness on the flame totem. Nine months later, a choppy but glowing holy flame totem was born, and to some it was a miracle, and others not so much. To prevent it from ever happening again, the flame totem was for safety measures stored in the altar boy's locker room, where it couldn't possibly be used for anything sinful again. So yeah, basically Holy Flame Totem is Flame Totem, but with a slightly different DNA profile. The skill works by creating a totem that shoots out three projectiles, of which only one can hit the same target. The other projectiles are simply there to increase the area that it's able to cover, and thus indirectly works as a way of increasing its area of effect. Unlike the bastardized Flame Totem, it doesn't deal a 100% fire damage. Instead, its main damage source is physical damage, whereas 50% of that physical damage is converted to fire damage. And as a side bonus, anyone standing in the consecrated ground near the totems become immune to curses. And don't get me started about the story behind the consecrated ground. That is something YouTube 100% will demonetize my video for telling. I'm not going there. Wallach's build is played as one of the choir boys who eventually grew up to become a hero fence. Via the Hierophant, players will receive general buffs to totem damage, cast speed, totem placement speed, but also the ability to spawn an additional totem and an extra 10% of damage taken from mana instead of life for a total of 40% when combined with the Mind Over Matter Keystone. The build is very budget and League Start friendly and does per se not require any unique items to work, however both the cheap Brain of Splinters and Clear Mind Unique Jewels are recommended to further increase the build's clear speed potential and damage output. Coming up fourth on this week's list is a Zombie Summoner build by Wrecker of Days. Now to be upfront and clear with you guys, this build is not intended to be a godly map clear speed build. Rather, its focus is to provide a very stressless and relaxed playstyle that some people enjoy. The title of Wrecker's build on the forums emphasized this by calling it Stress-Free PoE Slow-Mo Zombies. Now there are plenty of reasons as to why people may prefer a slower playstyle. Maybe they simply enjoy it that way, or maybe they have some sort of condition that makes it necessary for them. The latter is the case for this belt's author who suffers from post-concussion syndrome. And to prevent Path of Exile from constantly worsening his symptoms, he wanted to focus on making belts that didn't have a lot of fast or unpredictable movement and bright flashes on screen, and many other things that could potentially make it worse. With that said, the build is solid, and it is still more than capable of clearing the Atlas, so don't worry if that was your immediate thought. 
The build is played as the Necromancer Ascendancy, and besides the obvious general buffs to minion damage, health and speed that it provides, Rekka's setup also includes the Fleshbinder keystone that enables zombies to drop caustic ground on death and dealing 50% of their health as chaos damage per second. It also greatly increases the AoE of the zombie's slam attack, reduces its cooldown and allows you to summon two additional zombies. While the build is titled to give the impression that only zombies are used, uh, skeletons are also part of the build to help further increase the damage output and, in those cases necessary, to swarm the enemies with the Vault Summon Skeletons ability. The build is completely budget friendly and doesn't require any uniques to function. It has also been designed with new players in mind and the forum guide is very informative and helpful. So for anyone who might find the clear speed of some of the other builds a bit overwhelming or not to their liking, Wrecker's Guide might be worth checking out for you. The fifth and perhaps final build on this week's list is a Heavy Striker that can be played either as the Duelist or Marauder, made by Bright Warhawk. The build is designed to be able to stun and thus completely pacify any enemy in the game, including bosses such as the Shaper. This means that once you get it up and rolling, you have the potential to pretty much trivialize any encounter the game throws at you. There's a slight exception to this as there are a few enemies in the game that are completely stun immune, such as the Uber Elder. That doesn't, however, prevent the build from being able to kill that guy. It just doesn't rely on the stun mechanics to defeat him. Fortunately, there are only a few enemies that are actually stun immune. Everything else is possible to pound into submission with this build. Bright Waha's stun build can be played as either the Berserker or Slayer Ascendancy, each with their own benefits. As the Berserker, you will be able to build up Rage Stacks for a massive boost to attack damage and speed, and not to mention gain a huge damage modifier via Aspect of Carnage. Although at the cost of also taking an additional 10% damage from monsters. The Slayer on the other hand offers powerful leech potential via Endless Hunger and Brutal Fervor with the addition of a big boost to area of effect and extra damage against bosses. To be able to stun enemies in Path of Exile, you have to focus on reducing their stun threshold. There are several notes in the skill tree that make this possible when also combined with the right type of gear. This build features items such as the Tidebreaker Mace, a Comb's Heart Chestplate, the Devoter's Devotion Helmet, the Tomb Fist Gloves, the Weight of the Empire Jewels, and a few others you can check out via the forum guide. This build was good before the melee rework, but with the changes it is now in a crazy good position. And if you have ever wanted to try a stun based build and completely disable your enemies, now is the time. And now, the bonus build. For this I wanted to showcase something very different, yet powerful for what it's designed for. This week's bonus build is an Ice Spear Totem Duelist build by Vatch and it has gone as far as to delve level 1242, which by itself is a major feat, especially when done solo. It is the type of build that you can do with just one button press, great for those people that enjoy a more lazy playstyle or have issues with high ping or disabilities and such. The build paired the Ice Spear skill with the Spell Totem and multiple Totem support gems, and via this and certain specific unique items, it is able to spawn up to 5 or 6 Ice Spear Totems at a time that each deal a ton of damage. With all Totems summoned at a time, some crazy damage numbers can be reached and this build can pretty much deal with any content the game has to offer. To be able to summon so many Totems, the build makes use of the Soul Mandel Chest Armor, the Tukuhama's Fortress Shield, the Multiple Totem Support Gem as I mentioned before and the Ancestral Bond Keystone. The most hipsterish part of this build is that it is played as the Champion Ascendancy. Vetch went with this due to the permanent fortify and stun immunity this Ascendancy offers, but also in big part due to the fact that the Champion's Conqueror Keystone enables the totems to taunt enemies, thus making them attack the totems rather than your character, which makes it significantly safer when fighting some of the tougher enemies in the game. On a personal note, that is exactly the reason why I also designed my Uberlap Farmer Warchief build around the Champion. The taunt effect is incredibly powerful and makes many dangerous encounters much much easier to deal with. Vatch's build is built around blood magic, which first of all means that you won't ever have to worry about mana issues. But besides that, 
It also allows him to incorporate the Malachi's Awakening helmet that, when no life is reserved, adds a significant amount of elemental damage to the Ice Spear totems in this case. I did say it was rather hipsterish, didn't I? I really like the original design of Vatch's build and for you guys who prefer builds that perform great but isn't a direct meta slave build, then this definitely fits that role. And that's it guys, 6 new builds for you to try out or get inspired from. Make sure to tune back in next week for more build inspiration as I'll be releasing a new video showcasing yet another 5 builds for you to check out. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out my Path of Exile build showcase playlist that I've linked in the description below. I've featured tons of builds over time and there should be plenty for you to check out. Look for the updated for Legion tag in the title of the videos. If it's present, it means that at least 3 out of the 5 builds showcased in that video are viable for 3.7. To take the chillaxation to the next level, consider trying an audiobook while grinding some maps in PUE. I do this all the time and I absolutely love it. You can get a free audiobook of your choosing by visiting my Amazon store link below in the description. This will sign you up for a 30 day trial on Audible where you can choose any book you want. If you cancel your trial within the 30 days, you won't ever have to pay a thing and you still get to keep the audiobook you chose. This way you literally get a free audiobook. If you want a personal recommendation, I suggest checking out the First Law book series starting with The Blade itself or maybe the Name of the Wind book, which is part of the Kingkiller Chronicles. Both are fantasy series and they are absolutely amazing. Get ready to disappear into absolute comfort as you grind some maps and listen to a great story. Thank you for watching, and bros, do you even nerd?